Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. We're continuing our ACC football predictions today, and our next team also pulled off one of the biggest upsets in the ACC when they went on the road to Florida State and won on a last-second field goal. But they lost their star quarterback to the NFL Draft, who became the number two overall pick. But this season, they're still hoping to continue the success they've had for multiple years, and they are... North Carolina Tar Heels. So North Carolina returns 12 starters this season, five on offense, seven on defense. So the defense will more than likely be the strength this season, kind of carrying the team. They do get a transfer quarterback in Brandon Harris, the former quarterback at LSU. Uh, so that's good. They do have an experienced quarterback, not necessarily in their system, but one that competed in the SEC, one that does have a little bit of knowledge, one that um, can hopefully uh, not derail North Carolina like he did at LSU. So. Uh, we're just going to jump into it here. Uh, North Carolina, last season, they went 8-5, and five, almost beat Stanford in the bowl game. The year before that, they won 11 games, uh, and they went to the ACT Championship. Uh, so this season, they're kind of hoping to stay around that market. I think the goal this season is ultimately to get to a bowl game. I know every year, a team's goal is to make it to a championship, play for a conference title. But this season, I think North Carolina needs to set their expectation to just getting back to a bowl game, because um, I do not see them winning the Coastal Division at all this year. Um, they open up the season against California. That's going to be a fun game, Pac-12 versus ACC. Uh, if you know anything about California, you know they're going through some, uh, some changes right now. Not a very experienced team, brand new head coach. So I feel like this is going to be a major rebuilding year for uh, California. And I'm going to give North Carolina the early win of the season. That's going to be a good win, though. Anytime you beat a Power 5 uh, opponent that's not in your conference, it's always a big win. Uh, it's at North Carolina, so that's going to be uh, big for them as well. Then they get Louisville and Lamar Jackson at home, so that's, you never know. They could maybe spring an upset there. I'm not going to call for that, though. I really do feel like Lamar – I know a lot of people know what Lamar Jackson's capable of now. I think early last in the season we didn't know that much about him until he rushed onto the scene against uh, teams like Syracuse and Florida State. Uh, but this season I know people know a lot about him, but I still think it's going to be hard to stop him. Paul Petrino, uh, heck of a coach. He knows what he's doing there. Uh, and I'm going to give North Carolina a loss here at home. Uh, if Louisville is going to get upset by somebody, um, this could be possibly be the one uh, at North Carolina. It's kind of a tough place to play. Uh, and they go to Old Dominion. Uh, another odd matchup, traveling to Old Dominion. They're not coming to North Carolina. Uh, but they will get the win there, I think. Not a team they need to overlook, though. They were, or were one of the better teams in their conference last year. Uh, they don't need to overlook it, but I think they'll get the win. And then the in-state rivalry early this season uh, against Duke. Um, not as big of a deal in football as it is in basketball, but still equally as important. Um, this year it's at North Carolina. I know there's not really a road versus home because they're so close together. Uh, but this year I think North Carolina is a better team than Duke, uh, just based on their whole situation. They actually both do return 12 starters apiece. Uh, and they both got great coaches in Fedora and Cutcliffe. But I'm going to give North Carolina the win here. Uh, Duke struggled last season. Uh, they're gonna take, it's going to take a lot for them to get back to a bowl game. not saying it can't happen. But they are going to need to spring some upsets of their own. Uh, and then North Carolina travels to Georgia Tech, a game that um, will be very interesting. Could determine uh, not necessarily who wins the division, but where they, where they finish in the division. Both these teams, I think, are very equal. 16 returning stars for Georgia Tech. I like that it's on the, uh, on the road. Um, I don't like that for North Carolina. I like that for Georgia Tech. But actually, I'm going to call for an upset here, or if you want to call it an upset, uh, I do think North Carolina will go on the road and defeat Georgia Tech there. Uh, so right now, they're 4-1, sitting really good right now. Uh, only loss is to a Louisville team, who I think will finish high in their division. Uh, then they get Notre Dame at home. If you look, they really don't have any road games in the first couple uh, couple weeks. Old Dominion, I don't consider that as a major road game, because I think that will be a win for them. And then they get to play Georgia Tech. And besides that, they only really have two true road games by the time they enter uh, towards the end of October. So that's a very favorable schedule for North Carolina this season. Uh, although it does get tough down the stretch. Notre Dame uh, to open up October. Uh, that's going to be a tough game. Notre Dame is a better team this year. They're not going to go 4-8 and eight like they were last year. I see them taking a major improvement. Their quarterback's going to be, the quarter, whole quarterback situation is going to be a lot better than they were last season. Uh, and I think Brian Kelly knows what he's doing and he's going to straighten the ship over there. Uh, I do think North Carolina will lose Notre Dame at home. Uh, not going to be an easy game for Notre Dame by no means, but I do think they're going to get the win there. And then Virginia, we all know Virginia, they're struggling. They're kind of like uh, you know, like the Iowa State, the Kansas of the ACC teams that are perennially just at the bottom, at the cellar, never really that good. Uh, Virginia will get there eventually, but it's at North Carolina. I'm not going to get the win over Virginia, I think. 
Um, so really still only two losses, still only one conference loss looking good. And then this is where it gets tough down the stretch here uh, into October, late October at Virginia Tech. Don't like that matchup for North Carolina. Don't like that it's on the road. I'm going to give them a loss here. And then Miami, who I think is the best team in the Coastal Division, I think they'll lose that one as well. Um, and then a much-needed bye week and a late bye week going into that Pittsburgh game. Uh, Pittsburgh is also coming off a bye going into this game. So really uh, a team that's fairly equal. Both these teams are fairly equally matched. Um, but I'm going to give Pittsburgh the win here. Uh, as you saw earlier in my Pittsburgh video, it's on the road from North Carolina. And um, I know Max Brown at Pittsburgh is getting a lot of hype as well. But I don't like that it's on the road from North Carolina. And um, I think they're going to get a loss there. Then easy win over Western Carolina. That will make North Carolina bowl eligible here with six wins. And then NC State, if you remember last year, uh, North Carolina State needed a win in this rivalry game to get to a bowl game. North Carolina obviously did not. Um, but this year, I think North Carolina State is much better. As you've seen, those 17 returning starters will play a huge factor. And a lot of people, including myself, have them as major sleepers in this division. And this year, that's at North Carolina State. And they could potentially be playing for a possible... Uh, ACC division title. Uh, I, w I don't think North Carolina will be able to beat them on the road, although they could. I mean, I know they would love to get revenge over their in-state rival uh, after what North Carolina State did to them last year at North Carolina's house. So uh, this season, I have North Carolina finishing 6-6, six and six, which will be good enough to get them back to a bowl game. Uh, I don't, you know, I said they weren't going to match 8-5 and five record from last year. Uh, that was just, I feel like that was just going to be too tough for them uh, with the lack of experience that they have. Uh, compared to last year with Trubisky and everybody else. But 6-6 six and six is still respectable. It's another bowl game. Uh, they're continuing the streak of bowl games there. Uh, I, if I was a Tar Heel fan, I wouldn't be disappointed. I would be looking forward to basketball season at this point. But uh, at least you're going bowling again. Uh, and I think I think their expectations do need to be lowered a little bit. They're not going to have the same years that they've had in the past when they won 11 or 8 games. Um, so I, I think this will be a, kind of a down year for North Carolina, but hopefully they can build on it. Brandon Harris, I don't think he's a senior. I think he's only a junior. So maybe he can use this year as a development year. And maybe next year, North Carolina can uh, solidify themselves as contenders again in the Coastal Division. So please continue to like, comment, subscribe. Love to hear from you guys. Uh, the page is growing. It's been great. Uh, I really enjoy doing this stuff. I enjoy hearing from you guys. Uh, so the more likes, the more comments, the more subscriptions just helps everything uh, go better and helps us grow. So uh, please continue to do all that, and we will see you next time on The Gridiron Expert.